No, no, no. You're definitely going to get the money. No, no. Next week, I've got money coming in. I've got a, a deal closing. Look, to tell Jabba, I've never, I've never let him down. He's going to have his money. Look, I can pay you a thousand tomorrow, and next week, fifteen G. Right, right. Listen, I've got to go. I've got to go to a screencast, okay? Um, but yeah, money tomorrow. I, I swear. All right. Bye. Hi. Uh, thanks for waiting a bit there. Yeah. Uh, today I'm going to do another Vim screencast, and this is going to be different from the other ones. So today I want to share a technique with you for improving your Vim chops, and that is observing yourself at work. So what you're seeing right now is a little eight minute coding session that I just undertook. I wasn't talking while I did this, I just had the screencast software running. <laughs> and my goal here was to implement a small change. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I'd already actually implemented the change in kind of a draft form, and now I just need to turn it into something shippable that I can bake into this plugin that I'm working on in the screencast. Now, the reason why I think this is useful is because Vim is about optimization. And by observing yourself, particularly in this mode where I can see the keys I pressed, it's really easy for me to identify inefficiencies. And sometimes you're aware that things are inefficient as you're doing them, but you're in a kind of state of flow where you have a kind of momentum that you don't want to interrupt. And so you always willfully ignore those inefficiencies. But when you're inspecting a recording like this, there's no other thing that's competing for your attention. Like, there's no code I could be writing or typing <laughs> while I'm looking at this screencast. I can dedicate 100% of my attention to what I'm seeing on the screen. And so, what am I seeing here? Well, I'm going to just, I guess, commentate a little bit about what I'm, what I'm seeing here. Uh, and then point out a couple of inefficiencies that I see. But, but the takeaway that I really want you to have uh, as you look at this video is that you can do this yourself. You can just make a little five minute or 10 minute or 15 minute screencast of yourself working in them and then critique the hell out of it and see what it is that is wasteful, what could be improved, etc. So with that in mind, I'm going to start commenting on what I'm seeing on the screen here. Um, using tab completion there is good. Save myself a bit of time. Uh, here I'm using command T to look up the help for the match function. Uh, that's a fuzzy finder, so I was able to get to that pretty fast. Uh, and because I'm never really sure what the functions are called, it's useful to have the fuzzy feedback as you type to be sure that you're on the right track. But in any case, having looked up the documentation, I can do this test. Basically, what I want to do is make sure that when I'm on a sufficiently recent version of iTerm, that is 2 or higher, that I use these new escape codes, 13, 37 instead of 50. And for older iTerm, I should use the old escape code, which is now deprecated, but that's uh, the, escape code, the escape sequence of 50. Um, so you can see here that I... As I write this, I haven't really made up my mind what I'm going to do. I, I change my mind what the sense of the variable should be. Um, and, and at this point, you can see that the light bulb's gone on in my head, and I realize that if I have two variables, iTerm and iTerm2, I can combine them fruitfully to basically figure out what combination of thing, factors apply. Here I'm using the command line, or the command mode in, in Vim to test that the line of code that, I'm, that I've written actually works. I, I've written a few Vim plugins, but not enough that I feel confident that the code I write is going to do what I think without at least manually verifying it. So this is a fairly trivial change. So having done that manual verification, I feel good about it. So one thing I do notice as I look at this is that I'm using J and K a lot uh, rather than more efficient vertical jumps. And I think that's sometimes okay, where 
for example, sometimes I don't know where I want to jump. I have to kind of read the screen a little bit and moving a line at a time actually buys me time. Uh, and that's kind of what's happening there when you see me moving up and down. You see these pauses here where I'm basically figuring out what to do. Um, at that point, I realized I have a little white space inconsistency. I did use a vertical jump there, which was nice. Um, something I'm trying to do more of. Um, but yeah, lots of JJKK here as I figure out actually what it is I want to do. At this point, I realized that I want to be a little more future-proof, I think, uh, is what I'm about to do. Um, so I basically want to check for not just item 2, but future versions. Now, now who knows what the item 2 version numbers are going to do in the future. But I don't want it to suddenly stop breaking at version 3. And once again, just double-checking that the expression behaves as I believe it should because Vim regular expressions are treacherous and they're not like regular expressions from other languages so it's always good to just be sure that the one you've written actually does what you want. Um, so at this point I feel confident that what I've done makes sense. That was a terrible use of JJJ to select a region and then delete it. I could have done that with a motion. I could have done GUAC because I'm using the T comment plugin and that would have deleted the comment in kind of one motion, that would have been the sensible thing to do. Um, and at this point I'm just checking that there are no 50s still in the file. That all looked fine to me. Um, and now I've opened a new shell. I don't know why I opened a new shell because this is a Vim only change. But anyway, I opened a new shell and tested that uh, Terminus plugin still worked. The role of the Terminus plugin, in case you don't know, is to enhance the terminal integration a little bit. And I think I gave a screencast on this a while back. Um, quite possibly not that long ago. I can't actually remember what the last screencast I did was. Um, but yeah, it, does, it uses these escape sequences to do things like change the cursor shape and report, uh, register for like focus gain, focus lost events. And so at this point, it's all pretty vanilla stuff. I'm just updating the, the version history. Um, you can see you complete me there, helpfully jumping up. It's quite fast, so even though it's kind of in your face like that, it doesn't actually get in the way. Um, for this, I don't really see there being a lot that I could do better um, there. One thing I do notice is I'm hitting the escape key to get out of insert mode. That is a habit I want to get out of. Uh, I would rather use control left square bracket because it's easier to type. There's less distance to be traveled, despite the fact that it's two keys pressed together. And um, you see here, like I've, I've reviewed the change and then I review it again. So I do a git diff and then I do a git add dash patch effectively, um, so that I'm reading the code at least twice before I commit it. Because I'm a little bit OCD in that way. So that all looks good. Now we can make a commit and we're nearing the end of the change that I wanted to make. So at this point I'm going to wrap things up. Um, I know that watching me write this trivial change in the Terminus plugin is is not exactly the most amazing and groundbreaking education you will have received, uh, but I hope that you can at least see the value in the exercise. And I and I will I fully intend to do this um, in a way that doesn't involve me publishing it to YouTube. But I, I do want to record myself more and and really. Uh, eliminate some of those bad habits that I know I have. Right there you saw that I corrected a typo. Uh, I could have used uh, a key that I can't actually remember because it's in my muscle memory, but I, I think it's uh, left square bracket S to go to the previous spelling error. That would have jumped straight there. All right, that's the end of the footage that I had. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And at the end of, uh, with the next screencast, I'm going to revert back to the previous format, which is just concrete tips about things to do.